Greetings, friends. Uh, just want to jump on here and uh, share with you some of my reflections on the new year. Earlier this afternoon, I was uh, reflecting on the Gospel of John and uh, some of the implications of what he says there right at the beginning uh, for us uh, as we move into the new year and, and look at uh, new beginnings and all the new potential that is out there uh, for us. And so I figured I'd just hop on and, and share some of this with you. hope you're having a, uh, a, a good New Year's Eve thus far. I, I hope you're staying safe, and I, I look forward to seeing you and, and, and talking with you uh, real soon. Uh, but for now, uh, I, I'd, I'd like to read uh, just an excerpt from John uh, chapter 1. This is verses 1 through 5, and I'm including verse 14 in this, and then I'll share with you some of my reflections. So, John 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. And this is verse 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory Glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Uh, friends, as we move into the new year, I'd like to gently reflect uh, on this passage and, and what the coming of the Son of God into the world uh, means for us. Uh, we've thought a lot about the incarnation in um, the weeks prior to this, leading up to uh, this day during the Advent season, been thinking about the birth of Christ um, and his coming into uh, the world, and rightly so. Uh, the Word becoming flesh and dwelling among us is the theme of the Christmas season, and I would argue it is the, the very theme of our lives as uh, Christians. Uh, why does God put on flesh and dwell among us? Uh, why did he do it like this? Uh, something to note here about John's account of all this uh, is he doesn't start where Matthew and Luke start in their Gospels uh, with the birth of Jesus. He goes way beyond that into eternity uh, past. Uh, he, he shows us that before there was anything, the Son of God dwelt with the Father in perfect fellowship from all eternity. And everything that was made was made through him. <laughs> so he pre-exists his birth as a man in Bethlehem. He pre-exists the creation of the world. He pre-exists the beginning, okay? Um, now, you might also notice that there is a play on words here, in the beginning, okay? Uh, John starts, in the beginning. Where have we heard those words before? Sounds kind of familiar. Well, in the very beginning of our Bible, it's the first words, as a matter of fact, that we read in the book of Genesis. The very first words in the Bible are in the beginning, right? Uh, that was the beginning of the world as we know it. Well, as we know, that world got ruined through sin and death, right? So what does the birth of Jesus have to do with all of this? Well, it's a new beginning, friends. Uh, John is presenting Jesus as the beginning of all things. He created the world, and after the world was ruined, he stepped into the world and recreated it, if you will. Um, by taking on flesh, he has redeemed what was lost. He redeemed mankind. Uh, through the God-man, Jesus Christ, God and man have been reconciled. But not only have God and man been reconciled, all things have been reconciled to God uh, through Jesus Christ. What does this mean? Well, God is at work in the world to redeem it through Jesus Christ. Let me say that again. God is at work in the world to redeem it through Jesus Christ. And 
He is indeed making all things new, just as he said he would. So, as you go into this new year, you can know that everything is on track. (laughs) God is at work to redeem, to transform, and to renew. And he is at work to do that in your life and in the world. But it starts with you. God is in the business of restoring things. So, what was lost last year? What didn't get finished? What still needs to be done? God will be at work this year to work those things out. And it starts with you. And then it works itself out into the world around you, friends. God has given every one of us, a new beginning in Jesus Christ. This year is a new beginning. And my prayer is that this new year would be the beginning of something grand in your life. As God works out his purposes and you submit yourself to him, may his work of renewal be powerful and evident in your life. And may those things that were undone be done. May those things that were lost be recovered. And may those things that were started be finished. May this year be a new beginning through and through. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for my church. I thank you for all my friends, my brothers and sisters. Pray that you would bless them and be with them in the new year. Show them Jesus Christ. Show them his power. Show show yourself strong in their lives. Let them see Jesus lifted up on the cross, crucified as their Lord and as their Savior. Let them look to him as Lord and Savior and see in him the one in whom all things begin anew. And let their lives be renewed by him Uh, This year, each day, more and more, every day, uh, as we move closer uh, to you, as we move closer into fellowship and into what you've called us to and what you have for us. Help us to see those things. Help us to be faithful to you and whatever you have for us. Commit this year to you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, friends. Hope that blesses you. Hope that's a help to you. Uh, Look forward to talking with you and seeing you soon. The Lord bless you and keep you. In Jesus' name, amen.